Hi, this is Sandy. Um, and today we're going to be throwing paint. Uh, when you're throwing paint, at least that's what my kids call it, because I end up with paint all over the table, all over me, and all over the walls. So you've got to be careful um, and clear everything off. Wear something old, something black. Nobody will ever know I threw paint in this. Um, and then we're going to let it dry, and we're going to let it dry real good. If, if, you, if you rush the dry, then you mess up everything you've done. So uh, I want to give you a couple of examples, first of all, of things where I've thrown the paint. I'll start with this one. I threw the paint. Actually, I didn't throw the paint. I put the paint down. I put a lot of water and let it run. Then I put the salt down. And I knew exactly where I put the salt to give it special effects. This thing, I don't know if it'll ever be finished. Uh, it probably is finished and it will never see the light of day. But it gives you an example of what we're doing. Here's another one where I let the paint and the special effects work. Here's an example of when I use saran wrap or plastic wrap and let it work. Once again, it's, it's a painting you'll never see for sale because I haven't liked what it came out to be. This is an example of putting a lot of paint down, knowing what I sort of hope to achieve, and then putting the special effects in it. This was all done with saran wrap and a little bit of salt. That one worked. Okay, but now it's time for you to have fun. And this is what I call fun. But because I don't want that to get ruined, I'm going to turn it around. Okay, I have a couple pieces of paper here, but I'm not ready yet. Let's talk about your paint. You've got paint in a little, you may have paint in a little um, case like this. If you've got paint like this, that paint needs to be softened up a little bit. When I say pick up a lot of pigment, not a lot of water, it means I want you to pick up the actual, um, the actual color in a, as concentrated as a form as you can get it. So I might say, mix up a lot of paint, which is what you're gonna have to do. How would you mix the paint on here? You all have little uh, tins or tops to your paint. Let's mix up this green for you. I'm just putting the water in and I'm gonna let it sit for a minute while we talk. Okay, now let's talk about what we need. We need salt. We can have uh, salt in table salt, very fine salt, which is fine. You can do that. There are salt flakes. And then there's kosher salt. The kosher salt is gonna give you a different effect than table salt. There's pink salt. You won't get any pink color from it, but the salt just a different texture. And that's what we're trying to do when we use salt. We're trying to give it a texture. 
When the salt hits the paint, it pushes everything out. But some of the paint is very staining, and so if you put it on the paper, it still leaves a mark where the paint went down and the salt pushes it out. And what you're seeing as it dries is the salt. Give me a hair dryer. The other effect we're gonna use is alcohol. Just regular alcohol, doesn't matter if it's 91% or 67%, but it'll work. We're gonna take the alcohol and we're gonna put it in a little container don't need much, maybe a tablespoon. Okay, and we're gonna put that aside. All right, now, when I talk about we need paper, I know if you're like me, you didn't like what you did the first time. At this point, even the back of the paper is a little dirty, but that's okay. You never know when something like that's going to turn into a bird or a spot on the flower. Remember how I told you to tear your paper? That's what I'm going to do here because I want to start out small. I've got two pieces of paper to play with. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the cling wrap, saran wrap, or plastic wrap. Not sure what you're gonna call it. It's all the same stuff. If it stretches as you pull it off, that's what we're using. But I want you to be prepared. So if you're gonna do it, this is an awful big piece of saran wrap for this little piece of paper. You might want to cut it in half. So I'm just going to have a couple of these. Put a hold aside. And ready to use. Okay, we're about ready to start. Depending on the size of your paper, depends on the size of brush we're gonna start with. If you're starting with a what's this, five by eight piece of paper, you're gonna want a smaller brush. You're starting with, this is um, about 11 by eight. You're gonna want a larger brush. If you're starting with the size of paper we have over here, the big sizes of paper like I had here, you're going to want a great big brush. The thing about this to make it work is to get a lot of paper, a lot of water, get it good, uh, and, and have it before it dries. The larger the brush is, the better, but you don't want it too big. Okay, let's go back to our paper. We're going to start out by doing a wash. Remember I said that was put the color on the paper and then let it work itself. We can start by wetting it. And when I'm wetting this paper, the brush is wet. I'm barely touching this. We're gonna do just one color wash here. You see how that brush is barely moving the bristles? I don't want to be pressing. If you've got anything less than 140 pound paper, don't be careful how much water you're putting on. We don't want this to buckle up. 
Okay. Where'd that green go? Oh, there it is. Okay, here's that green that we got wet and loosened up. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna dip into this green and put it into this container right here. I need a little bit more water. Maybe that green's gonna be kind of hard to see. There we go, we got two greens going together. Okay, I'm gonna put it down here, just in the corner. Gonna get a lot of pigment. I really want this brush to have a lot of pigment on it. If it moves, that's great. I'm adding some water. There we go, now it's moving. Add some water here, I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna pick up some more pigment. I am not painting, I'm just taking and I'm dropping across the paper. I can make this move any way I want it to move. Ooh, now I'm liking the move. You like that? Since this is our first one, I'm going to stop here. If I drop the salt on this at this point, the salt would go, <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be nothing but water. So I wanna let it develop a sheen to it. Remember when we did our first um, washes, we made it do a sheen to the paper it's getting there. Can you see it? It's not water. But there's a sheen. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my salt. And I'm going to use the kosher salt. Now a lot of people will just take the salt and go, we're going to leave it like that. But it makes great effects. I like the effects that it makes, but what happens is it just did what it wanted it to do. When I use special effects, I think about it, about what I want it to do. But we're gonna leave this one and we're gonna let it dry. And when we let it dry, we're gonna let it dry flat. We don't wanna put it up because that will make everything run. We want everything flat. Okay, so let's put this piece of paper aside. And get my paper towel. Don't forget to start out with your paper towel. Okay, now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use my paints because I'm more used to my paints than your paints. And I'm gonna do a two color wash. I'm gonna think what colors make me happy. I wanna create a happy mood. I'm tired of being in the house. I'm tired of not playing tennis. I need something that's gonna give me some zing and um, make my life fun today. So I think those colors might be pink, and yellow. So, I'm and I'm not going to start my wash off getting everything wet. I want to see what it looks like if I don't get things wet. So I've got my pink over here and I'm just getting a nice amount of color in it, a lot of pigment. And I'm going to put it on here. Once again, my brush isn't pushing into the paper. It's just breezing over it. Okay, now I'm clean off my brush because I don't want to get pink in my yellow. 
I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get my yellow. I'm going to go to the opposite end of the pink. I want you to see something. That paint isn't going any place but where I put it. I'm the one who's controlling this. But I want these two colors to come together. So now I've got some water. I'm going to go to the edge of the water, or the edge of the pink, where it's dry, and then I'm going to get some more water. I'm going to go to the edge of the yellow where it's dry. Get some more water. Now I'm going to make them say, okay, now I'm, I want you two to meet. And so I invited them together. At this point here, I pick up my paper and I tell it to move. I really want this yellow into that pink. It's not moving the way I want it to. So I'm gonna come up here with just water and drop it in. And say, get a, get a move on it. Okay, now get back up into that pink and here we go. To me, that just looks like skyrockets. Okay, it is pretty much ready for my special effects. I'm going to do the salt again. I'm gonna stick with the kosher. Well, I'm gonna to go to the pink salt. Nope, I'm gonna stick with kosher. And I'm gonna say, okay, I think it's gonna go this way. And this way. And this way. And it's gonna start with a big pile in the center. That's perfect. Is this paper I used before? Yes, it is. Okay, I don't want to touch it. Now I'm going to take and pick it up, put it flat to let it dry. Okay, we need some more paper. Sharing my paper. I don't want yellow all over the back of this, so I'm going to wipe my area. Now I'm going to use the cling wrap. I'm going to create a wash. Now I've, I've made something exciting that's going to take me out of the I don't want to stay in the house anymore. I'm tired. I want to get out. I want to go shopping or I want to play tennis. <clears throat> so I don't have to go with those exciting colors. I can go with colors that I wonder what it would look like if I did it. So I'm going to start off with a blue. That is a dark blue, isn't it? That's a lot of pigment. That's a blue-green. We need some water. And maybe, I say I got blue-green, I'm gonna go with some purple. Now I'm going to come up, rinse my brush, get some water, and invite those colors to mingle. I'm not really painting it. I think I want the green, blue-green, to run into the purple first.
since that blue green is so dark, I'm gonna come in and give it more water. You see how I'm just throwing that water on it? Perfect. I'm not sure what I'm seeing in this one. I usually don't go with dark colors. I think I'm gonna to have to. All right, now I'm gonna take some of my cling wrap. Get some of this purple up. And maybe, this is salt on it, but that's okay. Maybe I'm going to make raindrops. And the rain is coming down this way. So I'm gonna stretch my paper and put it down, pat it into place. Maybe I don't want that big of a hole, that big of a bubble there, so I'm gonna push the bubble off. Pick up another piece of paper, or a saran wrap, pull, lay it next to it. Oh, I like that. Now I need another one. Whoops, that one barked, tore. There we go. Now I'm going to let this dry. I'm not sure I like this spot right up here. Next one. So I'm going to give it some directional rays. That's one way you can use this. Lay it flat to dry. Okay, when I threw that salt, I threw it all over the place. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is the sunflower one, how I did the sunflower. When I did the sunflower, I knew I was gonna make everything else yellow, and I knew the center was gonna be the sunflower part. So, the way I did that is I put down the yellow. Basically, I knew that's my center. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want it to look like it flows. So I've got an idea what I want to happen. Today's study is a study of patience because you're going to want to peek. Don't peek. Okay, then I took some dark colors. Maybe I took some of that purple and a lot of pigment. And I put it in here. Once I touch that yellow, you know what's going to happen. It's going to go into that whole flower. I don't want this purple to touch that. Okay, then maybe I'll take, I want this to be dark. Take some of this blue. Just drop it in there. Then I want some oranges, some golds. Oops, I'm touching that yellow, get ready. Okay. Here's some real orange. That's a good one. As I'm dropping this in there, you can see where I've dropped some drops. 
but that's okay. Now I want to get, let's see, let's throw a little maroon in it. Whoa, did that throw it in. See where it wants to go, where the paint's the wettest? That one's almost dry, it doesn't want to go there. Okay, now I ran out of saran wrap, which was my number one rule, don't run out of saran wrap first. Okay, let's get this color back where I wanted it. Let's get my salt. Drop it in the center. And take my saran wrap. And once I get back up here, and I'm going to push the color where I want it. some directional lines here and there. So this might be a little bit too dry, but we're gonna try it. Okay, let's talk about what happens if I peek. I know, I just can't wait. Well, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. So I put this down right here and I get it all laid out nice. There we go. And as we're standing here talking, I say, let me see. And I lift it up and you're not gonna see right now what's gonna happen, but we're gonna use this as an example for later on because it did pull up some of the color. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put this aside. Okay, now let's talk about alcohol. Whoops, the water's getting dirty. And I get most of the water out of my brush. This is a piece of paper that we painted on a number of times, did the splotches on it. If I put a dot of alcohol in this orange right there, what's going to happen? We're just going to let, let that sit aside until it dries. I'm going to wash the alcohol out of my brush, and I'm going to do a small wash. I haven't used yet. I haven't used red. Let's use red. Oh, that's maroon. That's a pretty color. And you can see I'm picking up some salt there. Okay, um, let's go for orange. How do you know you picked up salt? The reason I know I picked up salt is because I can see it on here. That salt's going to make a difference on how this paint mixes together. You, you might, I want stuff that you guys can know what the results will be. Okay, let's make it move. That's just flat water. There we 
we go. Okay, we need some more of that rip. Not wet enough. There we go. Now, get the paint out of your brush. And the water out, pick up the alcohol. And let's drop the alcohol in. Just a couple of drops. Give me a toothbrush, please. And here's my trusty old toothbrush. I'm going to put it in the alcohol. And I'm going to flick so that it goes that way. Okay, this is going to be pretty. I'm going to put this aside. And we're going to talk about one more thing. A lot of people that you see on TV doing their paintings will use a hair dryer. That's something I never use, and I'll show you why. You give me another piece of that. I'm going to use this yellow. Some water in it. And I'm going to use this blue. And I'm going to make them I'm going to introduce them to each other with water and let them run. I want some wetter blue up here. And there might be some purple I want right here between so that it's got three of them to move with see the bubbles in that that was salt okay now I'm going to do the same wash wet that yellow dried real fast <clears throat> and the way I did it is I introduced them to each other and I let it run And then I put some of this <clears throat> purple in the corner to let it interact with both sides. 
Oh, I'm gonna like this watch much better. Why do I like this watch much better? Because I use more water. Oh, and I hate to ruin this one because it's much too pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna use the other one because I don't like that wash as much. I'm gonna take my hair dryer. I'm just too anxious because I want to keep painting. So I want this to dry real fast. That paint doesn't want to run any place that's drier than itself. Okay, that's good enough. <clears throat> if I wanted to, this is dry enough now for me to paint. This one won't be dry for another hour or two. Okay, which, it'll be interesting to look at these two together to show you which is gonna be a more exciting painting. I love what that's doing. I think, I just can't resist. I'm gonna add a little of the pink salt right here. Maybe a little down here. Okay, we have gone over how to put a wash down. We've gone over two color washes, three color washes, salt, alcohol, and saran wrap. Now we have to let it dry. If I lift one of these things up, it stops the process, much like I stopped the process of the paper and the water and the color merging together. This one is going to merge together, and I'll even put some salt on this one. I'll put salt on both of them. And we'll see what it looks like. I can't show you what we've done right now. So if you look back on this video again, there's going to be a part two. And that part two is going to, um, the part two is going to show you what we do with what we've got. Okay, so I'll see you later.